Hello everyone, my name is Ninua and welcome to my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn Part 13.1 Today is the first of a handful of videos in which we are going to visit each city-state in turn and complete available class quests as well as site content before returning to ZMSQ in part 14. So in this video we are going to focus on Gridania and the Black Shroud specifically and because there is no MSQ it's a spoiler free video. And without further ado let's go! So you may have noticed that there is something that looks a bit different about the interface here. All those windows suddenly turned blue and that's because this video is the first I recorded after patch 6.3 went live and that patch included additional theme settings. And that new option is clear blue, which as you can see offers a bit of transparency, which is pretty nice, I think. It looks very good. The other options were classic FF, light and dark, dark being the default. But I think I'm going to leave it on clear blue. I quite like that. All right, and you've also noted that we've returned to the ground company because there are a few things I want to show you. Remember last time during one of the tutorials, we were told that ground companies paid their soldiers not with guild, but with company seals. And I've spent a little bit of time off screen since last video to earn some additional seals and I now have in excess of 2000. Probably the fastest and most efficient way for you at this stage to earn seals is to do supply missions. So I showed that to you in the last video again. So here I'm just going to do one supply mission and that's the Maiden Carp, which I'm going to hand over. And that's going to earn my Fisher a lot of experience points, as well as some additional seals. And if you look at the screen now, we got to challenge completion announcement. So if I go into the challenge log underground company, so there are two challenges, one for handing over five items to supply missions within a week, the other for 10 items. And the cool thing about them is that they reward additional seals. So now I have in excess of 3000 and the question becomes what to do with them. So number one thing you should focus on early on is promotions. Your present rank is Serpent Private third class. In order to be promoted to Serpent Private Second Class, you must fulfill the following requirements. And as you can see, the requirement here is paying 2000 seals. In the sight of the elementals, I hereby confer upon you the rank of Serpent Private Second Class and all rights and privileges associated with the title. Go forth and do that which brings peace to the Twelfth Wood and honor to our name. And by the way, you can check your current rank at any time under character in the profile tab. So if I try to apply for another promotion, but as you can see this time, I would have to pay 3000 seals and I don't have them yet. So I'm off to farm additional seals and complete additional supply missions. And as you can guess, the number of seals you have to pay for each rank up are going to increase and they increase by 1000 seals increment. One of the reasons you want to improve your rank is this. When you go to the ground company seal exchange, as you can see, what items you have access to depends on your rank. 
So with every rank, there are a number of items that are going to be unlocked. Some more interesting than others. But to be fair, the gear here is actually pretty good and you could outfit yourself completely at the Grand Company Seal Exchange. However, as I mentioned earlier, I would suggest you spend all your seals, or at least the majority of them, on promotions. And not just because you get more choice here at the Grand Company Seal Exchange, but also because a number of features, including housing and the hunt, are locked behind higher Grand Company ranks. And it will take you some time to get there, so the earlier you start, the better. Having said that, you can only have so many seals on you at any given time. That ceiling increases with each rank, but if you say you are about to hit that ceiling, instead of losing out on some seals, you are better off buying either gear or items at the Grand Company Seals Exchange. So just remember that. All right, and now we are going to head to the Archers Guild for our class quest. Level 20, to catch a poacher. Guildmaster Lucian wants you to go to Buscaron's Druzas. The rewards are 6,960 points of experience, an Elm Velocity Bow, and a choice between a goatskin jacket, a body gear for Disciples of War level 20, an Iron Salet, headgear for Disciples of War level 20, Goatskin Arm Guards for Disciples of War level 20, Hand Gear. And finally, Goatskin Leg Guards, Foot Gear for Disciples of War level 20, or 5 Alagan Bronze Pieces for a total of 500 gil. You come at a good time, Ninua. I have a task for you. A petition has arrived from the proprietor of Buscaron's Druzas out in the South Shroud. The petitioner, Buscaron himself, has requested our assistance in dealing with a gang of poachers. I would have the three of you meet with him and investigate his claims. The three of us? You mean Ninua, myself and... It would be better if I went alone, Lucien. The Mikote and... The other one will only encumber me. Oh, honey, the feeling is mutual. No silver, you will go as three. Also, it is past time you recognized Ninua as a fellow archer. I will not. I have held my tongue on the matter of her continued presence here, but I will bend no further. Who in the seven hells do you think you are? Poor Lord Lewin? In case you've forgotten, you aren't even a quiver man anymore. That may be, but I have shed blood defending our borders. Unlike you, Savage. Savage? You know nothing about me, you bigoted son of a... Enough! But one more word, and you shall have cause to regret your petulance. The three of you will go to Buscaron's Druthers in the South Shroud. Now, out of my sight! Good on Lucian for finally putting an end to the bickering. Man, this is going to be fun having the two of them <laughs> arguing all the time, all the way to the South Shroud. Speaking of South Shroud, I'm thinking that on the way, I might just complete the next quest for the Botanist Guild. So I'm going to go grab it now before heading there. Level 15. Haste makes waste. Hufusha is troubled and needs your help to solve a problem. The rewards are 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil, 
a recruit's size and a choice between gears for gatherers, cotton shepherd's tunic, body gear level 15, cotton shepherd's slops, leg gear level 15, goat skin wrist guards, hand gear level 16, hard leather espadrilles, foot gear level 15 or two elegant bronze pieces for a total of 200 gil. My dear Ninua, you are looking ever more a botanist. I do believe you are ready to take on further responsibilities for the guild. Guilds such as ours exist only by virtue of the cooperation of their members. Each individual must set an example for the rest if the collective is to thrive. The time has come for you to set just such an example. A matter has arisen, the handling of which I would entrust wholly to you. You may deal with it as you see fit, providing you see the problem solved. The matter in question concerns a valued client of ours, the merchant Abgast. It would appear one of our number has done something to upset him. Pray seek out the merchant at the ebony stalls and inquire after the reason for his ire. Oh, and choose the words well, lest you add fuel to the fire. So we have to go to, to that Abgast first in order to progress the quest before we head out into the Shroud. So for that we head to the markets. So our friend Abgast is on the left here. Fufusha sent you, Lichi. Good. I'm not a man to mince words, so forgive me if I seem blunt. You know what marjoram is, but of course you do. You are a bleeding botanist. It's a very common ingredient in alchemy, isn't it? Very common. Now, correct me if I am wrong, but aren't you botanists supposed to be the experts in harvesting such stuff? Yes, you are. Strange then, and the expert who brought me my last batch of fresh marjoram didn't so much harvest the poor plants as dismember them. Why, the leaves were so torn up, I couldn't recognize what they were at first. Needless to say, they are next to useless. So, thanks to your herb hacking colleague, I have no marjoram to make my concoctions, which is why I inquired at your guild, only to be told you were out of supplies. And here we are. Now, if it ain't too much trouble, I would be obliged if you could bring me ten sprigs of fresh marjoram. And I'd please light them whole as opposed to the fine bleeding puree your bush butchering colleague delivered. Truth be told, I don't much care about your hatchet happy friend. What I do care about is not keeping my customers waiting for their medicines. In short, hurry. Oh, and for the love of the gods, be gentle with the plants, will you? I should not have to say it, but after the last bloke, I'm not taking any chances. Well, I kind of understand why he's pissed, to be fair. That sh just shouldn't happen. And since we are next door, I'm going to head to the Lancers Guild as well and pick up that quest. That way we can do everything in one go around the shroud. Level 15, a dangerous proposition. Guildmaster Ewain urgently needs you to travel to the East Shroud in his stead. The rewards are 5760 points of experience, a brass spear, the piercing talon weapon skill, and a choice between a cotton, cotton tabard, body gear, level 16 for disciples of war, a hunting hat, head gear, level 16 for disciples of war, fingerless hard leather gloves, hand gear for disciples of war, level 15, hard leather crackers, foot gear for disciples of war, level 15, or Alagan bronze pieces. 
Ah, Ninua, you come at a good time. I urgently require your help. Scarcely a bell ago, our old friend Fulquez paid us another visit, seemingly intent upon reprising the performance he gave on the day of your first meeting. As on that occasion, he raved till the air was sick with slanders, declaring every soul who met his gaze more craven than the last. This time, however, not all ears were deaf to his myriad provocations. It seems one of our younger members took offense at his words and demanded satisfaction of the rogue. The two have since departed to duel in the East Shroud. Had I been on hand, I would have forbidden such folly and rebuked the lad for letting pride cloud his judgment. Alas, I learned of it too late, and the boy is gone. All we can do now is ensure that the hot-headed fool does not come to lasting harm. I would have departed in pursuit of the pair ere you came, but my duties keep me here. That is why I turn to you now, Ninua. Pray go to the East Shroud in my stead and watch over our comrade. He's already annoying me. Okay. What we are going to do now is I'm going to head to the East Shroud first. And then we can travel back to the Central Shroud and head for the South. And thankfully, Fulkes and the Young Lancer are very close nearby. Oh, look! A hunting block target! Most of the targets are going to be in the East Shroud. I will systematically go after them to complete both the Lancers level 2 hunting block as well as my archers level 2 hunting block when we return to the East Shroud for the main story quest which is going to be the next mini arc. So we meet again. You remember who I am, I trust? Unfortunately. <laughs> who are you again? I'm not sure how I would take that, to be fair. Probably let's not upset him even more when he has someone hostage. But of course you remember your mentor. He who taught you the true meaning of courage. Oh. I understand you were able to retrieve the Stone of Courage in Spirit Hold. It seems I was right about you. Aye, you have the makings of a true lancer, unlike those charlatans at the Lancer's Guild. It is well that you have come to me, for I have just the trial for you, one that will do wonders for your courage. Not interested, you say? Ah, but you have no choice. Should you refuse? Well, suffice it to say that I will not be able to guarantee the safety of your comrade here. When last we spoke, I told you that a lancer may forge true courage only in the midst of great danger. Needless to say, the threat posed by ordinary creatures is insufficient. You must needs seek out better sport. Ah, but fear not, for I have taken the liberty of finding you something suitable. Take this alchemic potation and sprinkle it upon the exposed roots yonder. Doing so will garner use of wrath of a certain creature, which you must then strike down. You really need help. And I mean professional help. Not something I can't help with you. <sighs> okay, let's find these roots. And defeat a trance sapling or two on the way. Let us see what matter of creature it attracts. Hmm. 
Look! And that's a trend! Well, a now. Maybe you shouldn't call it a trend, just in case it gets even more upset, but... Either way, it's down. Not sure how it qualifies as a test of my courage, though. So you have vanquished the trend. Well done. By striking down that frenzied creature, you have further strengthened your courage. Mm? Release your comrade? Oh, I shall, once you have completed my next trial. This one will pit you against a multitude of foes. Make your way to Lifeman's Stump in the Central Shroud. Once there, seek out a likely spot along the forest path to lie in wait. Man-eating wolves are wont to hunt uh, at this time of the year, and it should not be long before a pack appears. When the beasts show themselves, you are to slay their leader, the Alpha Wolf. I shall be observing from up close, the better to offer you advice. <sighs> you, you know what you can do with your advice? That's one hunting log entry completed. And now I'm going to actually add the chocobo to my hotbar because I haven't done so yet for my lancer. It's always like that. <laughs> when you reach that point, I kind of forget that I actually do have a chocobo in hand now. So before we head to the Central Shroud to complete the class quest for Lancer, I'm going to visit Nine Eevees. Now we will go to Nine Eevees because of the MSQ in the next mini arc, but there are a couple of things I wanted to show you before that. One of which is the Leave Meet here, which has a blue quest for us. So let's have a look. Level 15, Leaves of Hawthorne. Kina Liega, the Adventurer's Guild representative for local leaf quests at the Hawthorne Hut, is seeking an adventurer to undertake guild leaves. The rewards are 1,440 points of experience and 239 gil. Hail, adventurer! I am Kina Liega, a guild leaf representative for the Adventurer's Guild. If it is work you seek, the good folk who reside in the vicinity of Hawthorne Hut have entrusted me with a multitude of tasks that I am eager to assign to stalwart heroes. Stalwart ones, I say again. Many of these leaf quests are not for the faint of heart or frail of body. Before I send you marching into the wilderness, I must see what manner of adventurer has arrived upon my doorstep, so to speak. Let's start you on a trial guild leaf, shall we? How does this one suit you? Level 15, the transporter. A young sylph has wandered into Amarisa's spire, tired and frightened. The woodwellers on duty at the outpost have provided the wayward sapling with water and shelter, but are afraid they will not be able to care for the child much longer. They seek a volunteer to escort the sylph to Little Solace. The rewards are 1152 points of experience, 166 gil and one venture. Excellent! You need merely beckon to the sylph to help lead her to her destination. Use the beckon and mode to lead the sylph safely to the destination. You may find it convenient to add the emote to your hotbar before beginning the guild leave. 
that is actually a good advice so i'm going to do that right away because having to type the emote or worse go through the menu to select it every time it's not going to be fun it's going to become very irritating very quickly so hot bar it is and that's a recommendation that's valid for all of these quests you'll see there are quite a few of those among leaf quests in particular all right so we are in the green zone it's a good place to start on the leaf which is here initiate okay so first you need to locate whoever you are supposed to escort and then you have to use the beacon emote to have them follow you so you follow the green arrow on the mini map in the upper right corner and on the way as you can see you will have enemies specific to that leaf quest with that little card symbol also remember that other enemies in the area might attack you as well so you have to navigate that too and i don't know if it happens i don't remember rather if it happens in this particular quest but in similar quests sometimes you have enemies that will appear once you are past their location so they will attack from behind so obviously target the person you are escorting so you have to pay attention to that if the person you are escorting dies you have failed it's as simple as that And I think this is going to be the last enemy. So yeah, be careful because the these in particular are on the left. If you go too close to them, and I've had, had that happen to me before, they will attack you. But here we are now in Little Solace, so it's going to be safe. And once you've completed the quest, you have this message guided them to safety and you are good to head back to Hawthorne Hut. Completed all that needs completing, have we? Then only one step remains, to collect your reward. So we have had bonus on difficulty and speed. So the so rewards are fairly modest, but we do get a venture. And I'll talk about that once we complete. Such passable diligence and general competence are exactly the qualities I admire most. Now that I am satisfied that you possess the necessary level of skill, feel free to peruse the guild leaves I have available. I look forward to hearing of your future exploits. And now we also complete the leave of Hawthorne quest, which means that we have now access to all level 15 leaf quests in Gridania and the Shroud. And one of the particularities of leaf quests, battlecraft leaf quests, are that from level 15 onwards, some of them reward you with ventures. This is one of two ways to earn ventures this early into the game. The other would be to buy some with seals at your grand company, but this is something I try to avoid this early because again, I want to use my seals for promotion. Speaking of seals, let's talk to the Serpent Sergeant here. My duty within the order of the Twin Adder is to issue Grand Company leaf quests. 
Grant Company leave quests are various one-man tasks that have been deemed too important or dangerous to place in the hands of a normal adventurer. The Eorzean Alliance Charter states that the Grand Company leave quests are to be made available to all adventurers enlisted in a Grand Company, regardless of allegiance. However, Grand Companies will often provide members with bonuses for undertaking their own company leaves. There are also other bonuses rewarded based on performance. Grand Company leaves are special missions available only to Grand Company members and can only be accepted by speaking to a company officer. Completing one of these leave quests will not only earn you items and experience, but company seals as well. So I'm going to look at the earliest one, level 20. So exactly the same thing as other leave quests, except that Instead of Gil, you have company seals. So you can see the logic here. So you come here for your leaf quest, earning you ventures, and you also have those other leaf quests that earn you seals for your promotions. A good place to visit at this stage when you, when you are between level 15 to 25, roughly. Now let's look at the story behind this leaf quest. We need hardly recite the crimes of Lefkan the mystic, whose power within the realms of Dalamud ho -ho, has grown with every act of Mayhem perpetrated against all of Eorzea. Yet power draws envy and fear. Someone close to Lefkan whispers to us of her presence in Nine Evils. Beware the demons under her sway. Plant the blade deep. So you have 1,392 points of experience, 138 serpent seals, and a completion bonus of 70 points of experience and 7 seals. But you will have further bonuses based on speed and difficulty level. So that's why I've increased it here. So where is she? She's here. And if you read the text, you would have guessed that she's going to call upon reinforcements. So reinforcements should really be your priority because they will fall quickly. And just as with the other leaf quests, we can be transported back automatically. My duty within the Order of the Twin Adder is to issue Grand Company leaf quests. Collect reward. So again, you have the same bonuses types as with regular leaf quests. And as you can see, the completion bonus instead of the seven seals announced is actually 60. So almost 200 seals for just one quest, so not too shabby. And that was 
pretty much what I wanted to show you here in the East Shroud for this juncture in the story. So now we are going to head to the Central Shroud and Life Man's Dump for the tail end of the Lancer's class quest. By the way, just a reminder concerning seals. Um, I would say that supply missions are a much more efficient way of earning seals than leaf quests because especially as you level up your crafters, you will earn more and more seals for every single item. But you know, doing some leaf quests, even one per day at the lowest level, so level 20, will earn you just around 1400 seals per week. So they do add up fairly quickly. Okay, now back to our Lancer's class quest. And we have to wait here for the duty to commence. It's as good as over if the Alpha Wolf paralyzes you. So Pack Wolves, pretty easy to defeat. Courage is forged only in the midst of great danger, blah blah blah. So yeah, we'd get rid of the Pack Wolves first. And they fall very quickly. I will leave um, full cast handle the other two. And now focus on the alpha wall. And obviously, at this stage, reinforcements are going to arrive. Probably have ignored that second wave of pack balls, but in this case, the duty doesn't end just with the main target falling, so we needed to defeat them, anyways. You are to be congratulated, Nina. By throwing yourselves into the midst of danger, you have further tempered your courage. Oh, not that again! And in the process, you have brought peace to Lifeman's Stump, a place considered sacred by the people of Gridania. Having undertaken my trials, you must now see that those issued by the guild are not but child play. Mine is a true path to courage. All others lead to ignominy. If you wish to become a lancer worthy of the name, I suggest you leave Ewain and his house of Craven never to return. For your sake, I pray you do so soon, till we meet again. <sighs> I mean, it wasn't exactly hard, was it? So I'm not sure, even by his own definition, that was really a test of my character's courage. Anyways. So now we are going to take a closer look at some things in the Central Shroud and then the South Shroud. Starting with Gathering. Now, in the Central Shroud, one of the items you will need to gather often, still at this stage, are Ash Logs. Ash is still very relevant at this stage of crafting, although Elm becomes the new type of wood you will need to look into once you reach level 16 with your carpenter and other crafters. Also a quick note, as I finish my 
gathering of Ashlock for the moment. You will need three dozen of them for the Carpenter level 10 class quest. Obviously, you can buy them from the shop at the Carpenter's Guild, but just in case you want a more frugal solution, know that you will need that much before that quest. And otherwise, it's always good to have a few on hand, at least until you reach uh, beyond level 20, I would say, with all your crafters. Okay. Now time to move to another gathering. I was about to say gathering point, but it's actually a cluster of several, which are all level 15 and they are to be found around Ben Branch Meadows. The first one is this, it's a lush vegetation, level 15, and the key element here that you want to gather if you craft is cotton balls. Now, cotton cloth is going to dominate your life if you are a weaver for about 10 levels, but then the next type of cloth that you will be crafting regularly is going to include some cotton in it, in its recipe. So cotton is effectively going to be needed in abundance for roughly 20 levels. So you cannot have too much of it, basically. Also, you saw that there are three other regular items, in addition to the wind shards. And I'd qualify them as niche items. Lavender will need a bit more because there is an alchemist recipe using lavender to create lavender oil. Otherwise, I really only gather the other two to get the bonus points for the first gathering. And then I keep a handful at hand at low crafting levels because a few recipes use them, but that's about it. Okay, I showed you the loop of four. Now I'm going to farm some cotton. And I'll see you again once I'm about to be down. Okay, and last one. So as you can see here, there is a hidden item, which isn't rare, so you could gather four of them, but these seeds, again, have very limited use, at least at this stage. And they don't sell really that well on the market either. So now I'm going to head for a different gathering cluster. This time of mature trees against, again, level 15. And these include elm logs. That's what we are after here. Elm is going to play a major part only for a very short while. This is a dominant type of wood for only five levels and it's going to be replaced by yew logs which can be found in the east shroud and which also only last you for about five levels before we move on to another type of wood which will then again last us for a longer time that is ten levels lawfully.
And while I gather here, you can see on the minimap there is already the the other cluster of four visible, which is going to be a lush vegetation because the markers are blue. And remember, Abgast asked us for the botanist class quest to gather marjoram. And if I look at my gathering log and I search for marjoram, which is uh, the way at the bottom, you can see that it's found exactly where we are. So we found the right cluster. This is not a cluster you are going to visit a lot. None of the items here are used. Uh, with any sort of regularity. So it's something that you will visit only as needs be. So we have a new tutorial because we've reached level 21 with Botanist. And you may have seen it briefly. By reaching level 21, we unlocked a new trait. And I'm going to look at the tutorial as soon as I'm done gathering. Some gathering points will possess certain characteristics that, when exploited, may cre increase overall yield or number of gathering attempts. Gathering point characteristics are displayed directly beneath a point's integrity bar, but only can be seen after acquiring one of the Disciple of the Land Whisperer traits. So if I go under traits here, you can see we have this tree Whisperer level 3 which gives us increased yield. That means that we have a better chance of having the boon effect on a gathering point. It's going to be one of in a group of four that's going to be um, concerned. As you can see, it's this one here. So under the integrity bar at the top of the screen, you can see if the perception is 62 or more, gatherer's boon chance increases by 40%. And because the top percentage you can have normally is 60%, you reach 100% on that specific gathering point. Once you reach level 26, there is another tree whisperer that we will unlock that will give us another advantage on one of the four gathering points. So in total, after you reach level 26 with your gatherer, in a cluster of four, you will have two gathering points with advantages. One if you have perception higher than a certain level, and the other if you have gathering higher than at a certain level. So these advantages are conditional. And this is why, well, rather yet another reason, you should always keep your gear up to date with your gatherers. Okay, I'm quickly going to do this fate since we've already encountered it, if memory serves. I'm going to do this off screen and I'll join you right afterwards. And just one more to go. So as you saw, again, by completing fates, you get some company seals. And the higher the fate level, the more seals you are going to receive. Now, as we are heading for the South Shroud in this area, we have one of our targets for Lancer. So I'm just going to do a quick detour and take care of that. 
It's going to be short and sweet. There, and now, without further ado, let's head to the South Road, which I believe is going to be our first visit there. But even if you don't have to go for a class quest, the next mini arc in the story is going to take us there anyway. And obviously a new achievement unlocked. So we have those antelopes which are a hunting log target, but also this stag parting. <laughs> or is it parting? Fate, which I'm going to do. Something has normally placid antelope stag stirred into a frenzy, but the poor beasts down before they injure themselves or others. The reason why I bother with this fate uh, is a potential drops from antelope stag. Because antelopes, bidet stags or does, by the way, drop one very useful item. Which I'm waiting to see if I can get. Ah, that's it, we got one. Beast Sinew. So that's going to be useful in a lot of Leather Worker recipes, particularly. The thing is about Beast Sinew, though. That's one item, personally, unless you are crazy about farming, like I am, I would recommend you just buy at one of the shops. So the Leather Worker shop typically has them. And they are cheap. Whereas gathering them while farming for them, uh, defeating antelope stacks, which you can find also outside of this fate, is going to take you a long time if you craft many of these recipes. So it's much more efficient, in my opinion, to buy them in shop. But know that you can gather them this way if you wanted to. Another useful drop from antelopes are the horns. Antelope horns are fairly niche, but they are used in a number of recipes all the same. So it will serve you around level 20 to have some of those. Here you can see we got both beast sinew and antelope horns. One more to complete the fate. And we're good. Now I'm going to do the hunting block entry. And we also got 120 seals for your effort, which is pretty good.
All right, so now let's focus on our class quest. And for that, we need to go talk to a man called Baskaran. And since this place is called Baskaran's Druthers, I would imagine we can find him here. Oh, look! What a surprise! Ill House Proprietor. Ah, you lot must be from the Archer's Guild. Welcome, friends. Now, as your Guildmaster will have said, I put in a request for some keen-eyed archers to help me track down a gang of poachers that have been plaguing these parts. If I may, it is not uncommon to find poachers in this region. While regrettable, neither the gods quiver nor the wood whalers deem them worthy of their attention. Why then did you imagine them worthy of ours? Well, that's rather rude. Cause these ain't no common poachers, they are Power Mujuk's gang. Well, whatever that means, that shut him up fast. They say she and hers are always moving, staying one step ahead, but I reckon she's hiding out there somewhere. Thing is, I can't just send my people out searching. I made a pact with the red belly bandits, see? We stay out of their territory and they don't make no trouble at the druthers. That being so, if I summoned the massed ranks of the whalers and the quivermen, all seven hells will swiftly break loose. Assuming they saw the matter worthy of their attention, of course. Needless to say, that's not an option. As luck would have it though, I've got three keen-eyed archers to take care of things instead. And all without raising no alarms. We understand, you may leave the matter to us. That's one of the quickest 180 degree in the history books. Lei, Ninua, split up and scour the area for any sign of the poachers. Should you discover anything, return here and wait. We will reconvene to compare our findings ere long. Go. Alright, and I'm just going to talk to the Chocobo Keep to unlock, just in case. Although, now that we have our chocobo, it's going to be less useful. Alright, so we need to find three clues in this big area indicated on the minimap. So one is very easy to find. Well, two of them are easy to find, in fact. But the third, I remember, the first time, took me a while because I, before I could spot it. And that's because it is here at the very edge. And it's kind of hidden by the trees. The empty mead bottles. And now we can head all the way to the top of the area. So now all we need to do is return to Pascaron's Druthers and wait for our comrades. An iron leg trap and a poacher's arrow? These are both evidence of illegal activity, but nothing that will help us find power. And these meat bottles are but old refuse, from before the Druthers was even built. They have no connection to the gang. 
What do you know of this power woman, Sylvain? I know that she is the most infamous butcher ever to walk the Twelfth Wood. A born leader, deadly with a bow, she formed her own gang of Mikote hunters. She was apprehended once and would have been brought to justice had she not tricked a foolish young sentry into releasing her before vanishing without a trace. Is that so? In any case, we've scoured the area and found nothing. How do we know that this power was ever even here? I said we inform the guards Quiver and the Wood Wailers, taking care not to implicate Beskaran, and leave the rest to them. This doesn't concern the Archer's Guild. This concerns Grudania, Lei. Power Mujuk is a savage and utterly immoral poacher whose actions, however indirectly, threaten the city's well-being. But what would a vagrant like you know of duty to one's homeland? No more than she, I suspect. How dare you! I knew Ninua say something! How about stop being so childish? Shame there is no uh, such an option. Very well. We will return to the matter at hand. Mayhap we should take a second look at the clues we have gathered. Look all you want. Does the trap and the arrow we found suggest poaching? There is nothing remotely unusual about them. What do you think we should examine, Ninua? Well, they say the arrow and the iron leg trap are out, so that leaves the empty meat bottles. Why are you still carrying that rubbish? I told you, those bottles predate the druthers. They have no connection with this matter. But if these bottles are so old, why do they retain the scent of mead? They must surely have been opened recently. Wait, before the calamity, Baskaran once served as a sentry, yet even then he sometimes spoke of owning his own tavern, and it was an open secret that he was brewing his own private stock. If some survived... Of course, Baskaran's scar, his old lookout post. It may not be Pawamujuk, but we must investigate at once. Alright, so we are heading back out and conveniently, Buscaron's scar is actually very close by. There was no way I was going to get past this one. So might as well use that as an occasion to complete <laughs> the hunting log. Oh, I don't like hurting Kirkian. Duty calls commence battle for to catch a poacher. We are going to sink down to level 24 for that. Any signs? Look, the ground is covered in Mikote footprints. These tracks are fresh, very fresh. I'll wager the bandits were alerted to our coming and fled, else they are hiding near. Well, actually... Take cover! Eh? And there I was thinking we'd caught ourselves some of them meddling bloody masqueraders. Not that I'm complaining. Hiding your face is done right bloody rude when you ain't been introduced. Speaking of ill manners, don't you know it ain't decent to barge your way into lady's bedchamber without knocking? Mm -hmm. 
You would lecture us on manners? Truly, I have heard it all. They have us outnumbered. We had best split up. So he does mind. I try to isolate her from her litter. Sever, Ninua. The rest I leave to you too. As you will. So as before we are going to have multiple enemies and regular reinforcements coming in. So this one is pretty standard. In the next group and the groups after that you will have a healer so it's usually helpful to uh, take out a healer first they are usually weaker than the rest and they tend to make the fights otherwise over long Yeah, straightforward fight and not much to worry about. Was that the last of them? Have you seen Aliapo? With me, Ninoa. That was a peaceful showing, sister. And you call yourself a keeper. A hunter with no fangs ain't nothing but prey. No. Oh, bugger. Looks like playtime's over. Be seeing you, sister. So it was Power Mujuk after all. Baskaran must be informed. Power Mujuk. I was no match to for her. Okay, so we have to first report to Buscaron. Don't do what I did, I think the first time I played this quest because I didn't remember I had to go talk to Buscaron. I did the read the information on the right and so I headed to Gridania and I had to come back all the way here again. Without a nearby etherite. Seven hells. They were at my old post and they drank my old mead? That stinks most of all. Well, it's past time. The proper authorities were informed. I'll send messengers to the wood whalers and Godsquiver. The red belly bandits won't like it one bit, but I see that they are told exactly who the military is after. I only hope it will be enough. Of course, Power Mujuk's no fool. Now she knows she's been spotted, they'll break camp and be long gone by the time the next bell sounds. And the trail won't stay fresh long neither. 
Anyway, you've done me a great kindness, friends. Tell Lucian I appreciate the help. Well, we haven't really solved anything, have we? But I guess at least now we know. So that's something. All right, and now we can finally return to Britannia. We've done everything I needed to do in the Shroud. And now we can conclude all the quests one by one. Starting with the Archer's Guild. Welcome back, Ninua. Silver tells me that you encountered Power Mujuk. No Gridanian could fail to recognize that name, so oft has it been spoken, and with such bitterness. I fear we lack the strength to face her ourselves. This is a matter for the gods Quiver and Wood Wailers. That you confronted her and survived is a testament to your growing mastery of our art. Ah, and I was surprised to note that Leigh and Silver were not at loggerheads upon their return. I presume you owe this unnatural state of affairs to your calming influence? No, modest to the last. Truly, your every deed bespeaks a clarity of vision far beyond your years. I implore you to share that perspective with your peers and help them to grow into better, wiser archers. As you go forth and temper your skills in battle, know that we always look forward to your return. There's something very warming about Lucian and also, well, I don't necessarily love characters that are too nice. It doesn't sound forced coming from her, so I don't mind it as much as I would otherwise. Okay, next up. The Lancer's Guild. Ninua, thanks to the gods you are safe. That young fool of a Lancer returned but moments ago and through choked tears recounted to me all that, that transpired. I understand full cares again attempted to force upon you his corrupted notion of courage. I cannot say this often enough. A lancer strengthens his courage by tempering his composure and resolve, not by rushing headlong into danger. You were able to overcome full cares' trials, it is true, yet know that you did so by virtue of true courage, that is, courage born of composure and resolve. You faltered not before the fury of a frenzied trend, nor did you succumb to panic when surrounded by bloodthirsty wolves. Owing to this, you were able to perform to the fullest of your potential. You have come far, Ninua. It is past time that I taught you the piercing talon technique, one of the most versatile weapons in the Lancer's arsenal. May it serve you well. Now, I must needs decide what course of action to take with regard to your self-appointed mentor. Though no lives were lost, this latest incident only serves to confirm what I have long suspected, that Fulkes will cause great harm if left to propagate his corrupted notion of courage. He must be persuaded to desist, though I do not yet know how. Mayhap his whole regard for you could be turned to our advantage but leave such considerations to me. For the time being, you would do well to put full cares from your mind. Focus on your training and strive to master the technique I have taught you. I look forward to our next meeting. So again, by completing the level 15 class quest, we receive a new technique the piercing talon weapon skill, which is a long distance attack, not very powerful and not something you want to use too often. It doesn't combo with anything else, so it's not something that's going to fit in your rotation, 
However, sometimes you can make use of it if you do not want to throw yourself into a group of enemies but rather try to pick up one enemy after the other and isolate them um, from the rest of their group. So yes, a niche skill but you will want to have it on your hotbar at least in the other world. And in the meantime, I've switched the botanist to talk to Abgast. Did you get the marjoram? The herb is said to grow around the matron's leather, though I hardly need to tell a botanist this. Do hurry, I'm keeping dozens of customers waiting. All right, all right. Ah, the marjoram. And such fine specimens. I'm sorry I gave you such a hard time, friend. Thanks to you, I can get back to making echo drops. Do you know of echo drops? They are an alchemical concoction that restores voice to silenced lips, allowing the imbiber to cast spells again. Conjurers and somaturges never leave home without a bottle or three. But I must say again, these are some of the finest specimens of marjoram I've seen, and are none the worse for the picking. It's clear you know your way around the plant. As for your colleague with a heavy hand, I'm certain your guild will deal with him appropriately. Thanks again and send my regards to Fufusha. Well, that's well that ends well. I guess, except maybe for the guy who butchered the plants earlier. Alright, so time to head back to the botanist guild to conclude the quest by speaking to Fufusha. Ah, there you are. Thank you for a job well done. There is no need to report the details. I have already heard all I need to know. It is my belief that the botanist in question had note but personal gain in mind when he so hurriedly harvested the marjoram. In his haste to complete the task and claim his rewards, he damaged the herbs and rendered them useless. Such greed brings shame on our guild and I will not tolerate it. The offender's name shall be struck from our roll. As I taught you when you first came to us, a botanist nurtures the natural environment to the mutual benefit of man and wood. He who thinks only of his own benefit has no respect for nature and is unfit to call himself one of us. Of course, you hardly need reminding of this. Something tells me you shall never give me cause to worry. But let us speak of cheerier matters. Tell me, did gathering the marjoram pose you any trouble? Nope, not that I can think of. If you ever find your work unduly onerous, you might consider outfitting yourself with better gear. Even something as seemingly insignificant as a new pair of boots can make a world of difference. As you gain in knowledge and experience, you will find yourself venturing farther afield in search of new bounty and your choice of equipment will become ever more critical. Go now, Ninua, and keep up your efforts. I look forward to seeing you continue to grow as a botanist. So certain gear, grants bonuses in gathering, perception and GP, which you should know already. <laughs> I mean, it parallels Disciples of the Hand in that they have craftsmanship and control and CP. But she is right, and I haven't talked about that too much, but I'm regularly upgrading my gear by crafting it. So not every time I level up by one level but regularly enough that I don't really struggle with new plants that become available to me. Also, 
One thing that is very useful is that if you level up your gatherers or your crafters all at the same time, you can use the same gear across all classes. That's why it's more convenient to level them all up at the same time. Well, one of the reasons. That will save a lot of space in your armory chest. Level 10, supplies for the sick. Timbermaster Beatin is looking for someone to deliver ash lumber. The rewards are 5,839 points of experience, 289 gill, 250 wind shards, 200 ice shards, a bronze saw, and a choice between an amateur's headgear for headgear or classes level 10, an amateur's quota, body gear or classes level 9, amateur's smithing gloves or classes level 10 hand gear, or two elegant bronze pieces for a total of 200 gil. I see by the wearing of your sail blade that you have not neglected your carpentry since last we spoke. Very good. You will soon be ready for your third and final test in the meantime. The guild has need of your services. You are familiar with Ashwood. Ah, oh, but of course you are. I bid you craft me ash lumber. A simple task, you say? Then you shan't have trouble crafting me twelve lances. This is no jest. We used our last few mere moments ago. So you see, this assignment is motivated purely by practical concerns. I would ordinarily handle such a trifling task myself, of course, but I am feeling unwell, and I do believe you would benefit from the practice. Now go and do not disappoint me. Is he feeling unwell? Does he just not want to <laughs> do this himself? And also, isn't that a bit weird that the timber master himself would handle such a trifling task? Because it, it is kind of a trifling task. Anyways, leaving that mystery aside for now, let's go back to our task, which is to craft 12 lengths of ash lumber. So you remember from earlier in this video, I stockpiled ash logs because I knew this task was coming, but just in case you don't have any or enough by that time, you can always buy them from Feral. And at this stage of the game, you should have more than enough money to buy all the ash you need. Okay, and because this quest requires a big number of items but does not require high quality items, I can use quick synthesis. This is actually a very good example of when you should use that particular skill. So remember that in order to use quick synthesis, you have to have crafted the item successfully at least once. So if you don't have it available for Ash Lumber, you should craft one and then you can craft the 11 others with quick synthesis. All right, so I can just now head over to B team to complete the quest. Uh, have you brought the ash lumber? Yep. Here we go. Such a prodigious quantity. Thank you, child. You have done your guild a great service. Ash lumber is renowned for its unparalleled flexibility. This quality makes it ideal for using bows and myriad other weapons. By the same token, ash lumber is easily worked and thus ideal for learning the basics of our craft. Such a versatile material is understandably popular and so we always have need of more. It may uh, also interest you to know that ash possesses certain medicinal properties. Tea brewed from its bark eases various complaints. Complaints such as that with which I am presently afflicted. Suffice to say, I am pleased to see that your lumber is dusted with a sufficiency of bark fragments. But let us return to the subject of carpentry. 
you have proven yourself more than capable of working without my guidance. If you wish to market your crafts to others, speak with Gontran at the Carline Canopy. He has an abundance of guild leaves waiting to be fulfilled. Continue to refine your skills and return to me when you are ready to take the next step. So maybe he wasn't lying after all and he was really afflicted by something. Hmm. Anyways, let's take the next step now. Level 15. A carpenter in need. Timberbuster Beatin needs a carpenter to assist one of his newest apprentices. The rewards are 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil, a recruit's claw hammer, and a choice between an hempened doublet vest of crafting or classes level 12, or ash patterns or classes level 15 foot gear, or one elegant bronze piece for a total of 100 gil. Well met, Ninua. Your training as a carpenter is almost complete. Indeed, I had a splendid final test prepared for you. Alas, the plight of one of our guild's newer members demands my attention. The boy's name is Meda Pameda and he is an adventurer like you, the one of rather less promise. Something troubles the lad, yet he is loath to speak of personal matters with me, though I am the very soul of understanding as you know. Mayhaps you would fare better. I sense that he may be more inclined to speak with a fellow adventurer. Now go, Ninua, and do not disappoint me. So, Meta Pameda has been sitting over there all this time. And I was almost running into doors. God, strike me down for a fool. I'll never be able to finish in time. Please, you must help me. You can make ash short bows and feathered harpoons, can't you? You see, I once and forgot that I had agreed to craft two weapons for the archers and lances guild for delivery, no later than, well, today. But today I am also obligated to complete an order of 100 lengths of oak lumber. The point being that I can't possibly do both, and Timber Master Beatin is a veritable terror when his wrath is on him. If I dare neglect his duty, he will surely not spare me his sow. So, while I labor over this lumber, might you consent to craft the goods for the guilds? Thank you. Oh, and when you finish them, I would appreciate it if you could deliver the weapons to the relevant guild masters. Godspeed. Okay, so first thing, let's have a look at what we need to craft these two weapons. And if we look at what we need here for the feathered harpoons, ash lumber, we've just crafted some. The soiled femur can be found in western Sunalan or central Sunalan with the tin ore and zinc ore. So you need a miner for that. The crow feathers, we had to find some for our botanist class quest. And they can be found in the central shroud. Animal glue, I'm going to craft now with my alchemist. You need an animal skin and two bone chips. The bone chips are items found in central center line with your miner. And we had to gather some for our level 5 miners class quest. So now I just need to craft the ash lumber and I want to explain a couple of things because I've leveled up my crafters so now I have new abilities. If you look at the top left corner of the screen you can see that my condition is now indicated as good and instead of using the basic touch I've used the standard touch which is one of my new abilities. Standard touch is the same as basic touch just more costly in terms of CP so it costs 32 instead of 18 but also more efficient at 125% of a basic touch. One more thing that you need to know is that basic touch and standard touch 
perform a combo action. If you use basic touch first and then use standard touch, standard touch will cost only 18 CP instead of 32. So its cost is reduced to that of a basic touch. So suddenly you have the increase in efficacy without the extra CP cost. So as you can imagine, you want to use them both in combination most of the time. It's okay if you are a little bit confused, I will craft enough uh, for you to see more examples anyways in decent further video down the line. So now I'm going to craft my feathered harpoon. You don't need a high quality harpoon for this particular task by the way. And here I just need to increase the progress, so I'm going to use veneration. It gives me a 50% bonus on synthesis actions for 4 turns. Now, my condition has become good, but it is used less in because the quality is already at 100%. So I'm going to absorb it and transform it into CPs uh, with tricks of the trade. And now I have my Vaza Harpoon, which also happened to be high quality. Now let's focus on the R shot bow. So I just need an ash branch, which again can be found uh, in the same place in the central shroud than the ash log. Some hempen yarn and an ash lumber, which I'm going to craft again. Okay, so now I'm starting with basic touch, followed by standard touch, basic touch again, and I'm absorbing the good condition, transform it into CPs with trick of the trade, veneration, and then to synthesis, and I'm done with the ash short bow. Now I didn't need to convert that good or excellent condition into CPs at that stage. I knew I had enough to complete my crafting. But I wanted to show that to you because sometimes it will make sense to use a good or excellent condition to earn extra CPs. But we will see examples of that later on with more difficult crafts. Welcome, adventurer. To what do we owe the pleasure? Is this the Ashot bow we ordered? Thank you for delivering it. One of our Mikote recruits has been struggling, Lex, to wonder. Talented though she is, the longbow we furnished her with does not suit a Mikote's shorter arms and slighter frame. But I dare say this short bow with its lighter draw weight and more modest span, should help her reach her true potential. Indeed, short bows not unlike this were favored by her ancestors, and some things never change. It is clear to me that a great deal of care went into this short bow's construction, and we see that our recruit spares no effort in making the most of this boon. I'm just so sad she doesn't seem to recognize us. And you will see that in other... Well, we've saw that already, uh, notably with BT. But in a lot of other occasions, people actually do recognize you if you've met them before doing side content. But here she doesn't. And that makes me so sad. Anyways, I'll get over it. Okay, so time to deliver Wayne his weapon, and he won't recognize us either, if I remember. Yeah. Well met, adventurer. You do not seem to be here for training. Ah, the feathered harpoon. My thanks for the delivery. 
Had we not received it in time, I was considering using a fisherman's harpoon instead. You seem surprised. I take it you are not aware that the harpoon we use in battle were born of the humble fisherman's tool? Aye. When Huron fishers migrated inland from the coasts, they adapted the tools of their trade for use in the hunting of game. The resulting harpoon proved a fearsome weapon, indeed, and so the lancers of old took it for their own. Hard to believe, is it not? I must say, this harpoon is a particularly impressive piece of craftsmanship. My compliment to the carpenter. Alright, and just need now to report to Pitting to complete the quest. And then we'll just move on to the uh, Leather Workers class quest. How kind of you to assist Merapa Meda with the orders. The guildmasters spoke highly of your craftsmanship as well. This is very good. Do not attempt to mislead me. I know full well it was your work. Needless to say, it was necessary to punish the affair. Ah, I seem to spend more time sewing apprentices than would of late. Okay, that's a disturbing mental image. Please tell me you didn't do that. I jest, of course. A sow is wasted on an apprentice. The stink of blood lingers, making it hard to focus on work. This I know. Wait, how would you know that? Now, on reflection, don't tell me. I will admit, I was not ignorant of Merapamera's situation. In fact, I recognized an opportunity to test your character. You aided your fellow carpenter with no prospect of reward, delivering finely crafted goods where merely serviceables one would have sufficed, and you claimed no credit. I am proud of you, Ninua. There is no doubt in my mind that your talent will serve the nation of Gridania well and save many lives, just as they will bring about many deaths. This is the responsibility of all who make weapons. But the choice between the deaths of our people and the deaths of our enemies is no choice at all. You have passed the third and final test. Congratulations, Ninua. By your actions you have demonstrated your understanding of what it means to know the wood, be the wood, and to love the wood. You possess the knowledge, skill, and compassion necessary to master carpentry. By overcoming these trials, you have proven that you are no longer a novice. The sapling is well on its way to becoming a tree. You are now a true carpenter of the Oak Atrium. No doubt that however refined your skills may be, there will always be more to learn. Represent us well on your travels, Ninua, and return to us often. You shall always be welcome. And despite Beatin's words, the uh, class quests continue regularly every five levels, as with any other class. So we'll return once we move the MSQ forward some and level up our crafters enough to pick up both the level 20 and 25 class quests. All right, and as mentioned earlier, time now to go to the Leather Workers Guild for the last two quests of the day. Level 10, Jeva's Gambit. Guildmaster Jeva has a new task for you. 
The rewards are 5,899 points of experience, 289 kill, 250 earth shards, 200 wind shards, a bronze head knife, and a choice between an amateur's headgear, headgear or classes level 10, an amateur's quarter, body gear or classes level 9, Amateurs smithing gloves, hand gear or classes level 10, or two Alagan bronze pieces. How are your techniques coming along? If you honestly think you've improved, then I have a new task for you. But before that, let me ask. You are familiar with the Fen Il brand, are you not? Yes, you talked about it. But of course, how silly of me. Even an adventurer hailing from distant lands should know the most famous brand of leather goods in Eorzea. Anyway, all goods sold under the distinguished Fenil name are crafted by none other than our leather workers. We've been asked to fill an especially large order on short notice, and so our stores of hard leather are nearly depleted. I was considering how best to handle this situation when you arrived. I'm sure you see where this is going. We need a dozen circles of hard leather, as fast as you can make them. Quickly now, go! So you can see a pattern emerging here at the same level. Class quests are similar across crafter classes, except for culinarian which always finds a way to stand out. So for instance, all crafter classes except culinarian have this level 10 class quest requiring to craft 12 of one simple item. Okay, that's going to be an interesting one. Because if you look now, it tells me that I have 11 out of the 12 that I need to deliver to Jeva on the right of the screen. And the quest indicator is red, even though I did craft 12 hard leather circles. Why? Because one of them was an HQ item. HQ and NQ item do not stack. So, because we have to hand over a stack of 12 hard leather, I just do not have a stack of 12 hard leather right now. So I cannot do that, and that's why the indicator is red for the completion of the quest. We could craft an extra hard leather, but I can also right click on the HQ leather and select the first option, lower quality. This will turn the HQ item into an NQ item. The game asks to confirm because um, it is not something you want to do by accident. Now the check mark is green. Please let, tell me you have brought the leather. Yes, but we have one more issue. They haven't stacked up. So now I can't hand over the 12 directly in the item request window. I have to stack them up in my inventory first. So I'm going to sort them and then I'm just going to move the two together and now we can hand it over. Well, well. These are better than unexpected. It is more difficult to boil leather than to tan it, but the process results in a stronger, more durable product. These properties make hard leather the material of choice for those who prefer stouter armor. The fruits of your labor shall serve the guild well, as training materials for new initiates. You seem troubled. Surely you did not imagine that your leather would be used in the construction of fennel goods. <laughs> oh gods, no! Only our elite leather workers, handpicked by me, are permitted to make wares that bear the fennel name. While we had enough hard leather to complete the fennel commission, some of the materials used 
despite being of excellent quality, were originally intended to be distributed as practice materials. As such, the initiate supplies run dangerously low. Come now, there is no call to be disheartened. Do you not see that in furnishing the beginners with supplies, you have proven that you are no longer a beginner? You have given them that which they could not make themselves. When you first arrived, I would never have entrusted you with such a task. Make no mistake, you are improving. Why at this rate, my great-great-grandchildren may yet commission you to make a show soul, or even two. Speaking of commissions, I think you've proven yourself sufficiently skilled to handle orders without my supervision. Go and see Gontran in the Carlin Canopy if you are interested in taking on a few guild leaves. You would gain much needed experience and earn yourself some coin besides. But enough chatter. Come and see me again when you have further refined your technique. And if you make it during my lifetime, let us say you find me in a more talkative mood. She's always the optimist, isn't she? <laughs> Thank you, Jeva, for keeping our feet firmly on the ground. Level 15. Working Hells for Leather. Guildmaster Jeva requires your assistance due to an unanticipated setback. The rewards are 12,960 points of experience, 382 gil, a recruit's all, and a choice between a hampered doublet vest of crafting, all classes level 12, ash patterns, all classes level 15, or an Alagan bronze piece for 100 gil. Ah, Ninua, you could not have come at a better time. We urgently need someone to craft a pair of hard leather caligae and a hard leather chucker. Do you think you could handle both? To explain the situation, I had entrusted the commission to another leather worker, but found the quality of his work so wholly unacceptable that I had no choice but to demand that he start again. Naturally, I gave the fellow a sound dressing down, reminding him that he had dishonored the name of Fen Il, and so on only for him to run off bowling, leaving a trail of snot and tears in his wake. I can totally imagine the scene. Needless to say, uh, I was more than a little concerned. After all, there was a very real possibility that I was going to have to keep a customer waiting. But thanks to your timely arrival, everything will be put to rights. As I've already mentioned, I need you to craft me the two articles in your overly sensitive colleague's steed. This will be your first task undertaken for Fenil Fineries. This is an opportunity few leather workers receive. See that you don't squander it. What is it? Troubled by the crushing weight of expectation? Then you may cast your fears aside. You've done yourself credit thus far, carrying out my instructions with nary a complaint and taking all my criticism on the chin. I know that you won't shame us. And even should the worst come to the worst, I know you will have the good grace to go before the customer and apologize in person. But enough talk, you had best get started if you are to complete the order on time. She's incredible, that woman. Anyways, let's look at the crafting log. So, the hard leather caligae, as you can see, you will need some bronze rivets as well as some sinew and a hard leather and the same for the hard leather chucker except for the bronze rivet so i'm going to quickly have my armor you could use the blacksmith as well to craft the um, bronze rivets or oh, obviously if you don't have either yet you can go and buy the bronze rivets directly from the shop at the guild. And I've just noticed if you look at the bottom right corner of the screen right now, you can see that I have quite a few items of gear which have reached a hundred percent spirit bound. So it's time to uh, extract the material. Thank you. 
And in general, I recommend that you keep an eye on the state of your items with respect to spirit bound and extract materia when you can. Some of it will be pretty much useless. What I'm extracting now, you won't have much use for it, to be fair. Um, but the materia from Disciples of War and Magic gear. If you start doing the relics later on, they will come in handy. Especially since the price for materia on the market from Disciples of War and Magic from l very low levels, so 1 and 2 in particular, have risen sharply lately. Okay, so now that I have one of each material, I can quickly craft the hard leather Caligae themselves. The hard leather Caligae, I have to say, is an item I actually like to use as a glamour. I think it looks quite nice. The two pieces are ready, you say? Hm, that remains to be seen. Hmm. The leather used is well made, and the articles look as they should. The construction is solid. Good. As you know, this type of leather is valued for its toughness and durability. Yet these same qualities make it troublesome to work. An inexperienced leather worker often ruins the material with shoddy stitching and poor molding, resulting in a final product that is mishappen, brittle and liable to fall apart. Your caligae and choker, however, bear none of the hallmarks of amateurism. Your construction is solid and your leather has retained its strength. You have grown considerably as a leather worker, Ninua. Your latest creations attest to this. But you still have some way to go. The clasps aren't securely fastened and the stitching needs to be tighter. In short, you must learn to pay more attention to the details. These articles aren't quite fit to be placed into the customer's hands, but they can be salvaged. You have done your part well enough. I will see to the rest. In the meantime, I would have you attend to something else. It is an important duty and one that is all too often overlooked by artisans, namely taking responsibility for failing short of expectations. In the guild's reception area, you will find an olden gentleman named Tsosobati, one of our regular customers. It is he who placed the order for the Calicae and Choker. I would have you go to him and kneel in apology for the delay. Well, I guess it could have gone worse. <laughs> I mean, at least Jeva knows how to keep you on your toes. So, Neil, you could simply write slash Neil in the chat box. Yeah. What in the name of the Twelve are you doing? Do get up! What is that? My order is delayed, you say? Is that all? Ha! <laughs> and there I was thinking something terrible had happened. It's quite all right, truly. I came here precisely because the Leather Workers Guild has never compromised on quality. This trifling delay only confirms to me that the principle still endures. Anyway, it's very kind of you to bring me word. By the by, 
Your face isn't familiar to me. Are you new to the guild? So Jeva herself is applying the finishing touches to your handiwork even as we speak. Well, I dare say the guildmaster sees promise in you. Why else would she consider your work worthy of her personal intention? She's famous for having cut up far more experienced leather workers' efforts for scraps, and that before their very eyes. As for encouraging you to come and apologize, some may think that Jeva goes too far, but it is simply her way of educating her own on the finer points of business. As a native of Hulda, I may say with some confidence that it is an education worth enduring. I like his point of view on all of this. Well, it has been a pleasure to m meet a rising star of the Leather Workers Guild. But that is no hollow flattery I speak. Your name is Ninua Uzume, yes? I shall observe your career here with great interest. In fact, the next time I place an order at Fen Il Fineries, I shall make a point of insisting that you are given the job. Well, that's very nice of him. Thank you, good sir. But I think it was actually quite nice to have his opinion on this because his points are actually very valid. And that basically concludes the day. Just time for me to head back to the inn as usual to close this video. Alright, so that was a full day of side quests and class quests here in Gridania. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time, more of the same, but in Ulda. There will be something a little bit different though, because in Ulda we are going to look into an optional dungeon, our very first. How exciting! And in the meantime, I wish you all a great day, a wonderful week ahead, and until next time, bye-bye.